Good afternoon, everyone. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. I hope you're having a really good afternoon, Tuesday. Yay, everyone, let's go. All right, so it's been like almost a month since we talked about Brooke Houts, but there has literally been nothing to say because if you recall, Miss YouTuber Brooke Houts, who has a astonishing over 300,000 followers, though I'm not sure why, um, posted a video in early August of her doing a prank with her dog, Sphinx. Now the problem here was that she included raw uncut footage of an altercation that she had with her dog where the dog was jumping on her. And I might add, this is a very large Doberman puppy. Um, she had, the, the prank was supposed to be him walking into uh, like, plastic wrap, which is actually really mean, you guys, not even gonna lie. Anyways, in the video altercation, she knees him down. She, um, when she's trying to wrap up the video and say goodbye to everyone, he comes onto her and he sort of, I don't know, I'll show you a photo. So there's what they should look like, right? But she kind of grabs him and pins him down and then you can hear her spitting. On the dog okay so after she does that he still keeps going at her and then she goes off the camera and you can actually see her kicking the dog and like screaming at him and yelling obviously the video sparks a lot of outrage like a ton and it's prompted her to remove the video she later uploaded uh, the video without that footage in it of the actual prank but then she actually deleted that video after outrage ensued of the uncut raw footage of her essentially abusing her dog on YouTube. Since then, she um, issued an apology on Twitter, which was kind of basically saying that, you know, it's really hard to have a big dog and she would never hurt him and he's 75 pounds and um, she's trying to get him into a training class, but trainers are very expensive, and she would never do anything bad to him, and um, she's deactivating her stuff, and anyone that knows her knows that she's not an animal abuser and that she loves them and her dog is safe. Typical stuff, right? And you know, since all of this went down, she actually has not been on Twitter, she has not been on Instagram, she hasn't posted anything on YouTube. And YouTube has done nothing to deactivate her account. And in fact, because of the media exposure, her videos are getting a lot of views. In fact, her most recent upload has almost 2.5 million views. And sadly, her average views were nowhere near that prior to this upload, to, to, to this scandal. She hasn't tweeted since August 6th. She hasn't posted anything on Instagram. She's virtually completely off of social media, or if she's on social media, she has sock accounts and she's just hiding from all of us. So following all of the hubla, but every YouTuber on the world, on the planet, including me, making outraged um, commentary about what happened, the LA um, PD began an investigation and forwarded the video along with information about Brooke and Sphinx to their animal cruelty department. After a months long investigation, they have notified and talked with TMZ today and said that they will not be pressing any sort of charges against her and that Sphinx will continue to live with her. And at this point, there is nothing to see here. Apparently, the review of the video was concerning but did not meet the level of criminal abuse of an animal. And while they completed the investigation, they did not remove Sphinx from her home, so she still has custody of the dog. And she is free to continue to do what she does with her dog, I guess. Sad. I feel bad for Sphinx. I feel bad for Sphinx. Now, obviously, I'm not the only one that's kind of annoyed and outraged like by this because there's a couple things that bother me here. One, YouTube has done nothing to her account. Um, there's that what she put online was clearly a violation of the guidelines um, in terms of harm like you're not supposed to put up harmful content and you know another thing that I think is odd is there's not a policy against any sort of abuse towards animals on YouTube 
Now there's a policy against pranking children, but there's not one against pranking animals. And I think animals and children fall, fall, fall in very similar spectrums of being extremely vulnerable and not having the ability to say no or have a voice. And so in this case, I almost feel like there should be a guideline so that there shouldn't be videos pranking dogs or cats. I mean, come on, dogs and cats don't know what's going on. And having a dog that's 75 pounds run into cellophane, that's not even funny to me. I have, I have two dogs. And I will tell you, in the entire time I've been a dog owner, I've never pulled a prank on a dog because I don't really think it's funny. There's this whole other aspect of literally everyone on the internet is mad at her. I mean, let's not even talk about that. Or let's go there because Twitter erupted following the news that nothing was going to happen with the charges. Um, one person was like, basically, like, you're not going to get any charges. Like, you can do this and nothing's going to happen. And then other people were just telling her she's disgusting. I hope your channel gets deleted. Um, other people was like, one person said, I'm, if you're trying to bounce back, I'm going to unfollow you. Everyone will remember how you treated that dog. And this Minette says that she got away with abusing her dog. No charges were being brought forth, and she keeps and she gets to keep her dog. Congratulations on getting away with being a piece of crap. Um, so disturbing and to hit and spit on a dog, but not a crime. Okay, Brooke Houts isn't charged for animal abuse, even from what we saw on the videos. Corrupt, ban Brooke Houts from YouTube for alleged dog abuse. Now that was one person that said that. So this is an interesting take here. Like, I don't understand really why YouTube hasn't really said anything about this. And probably most startling is that she hasn't lost any subscribers, really that many at all. She's down to 325,000 subscribers as of this morning. Now, some of these people might still be hanging on in the hopes that they think drama will start because we know that happens. We know a lot of times when drama erupts on YouTube, people literally subscribe just so that they can find the follow-up video where the person is like, I'm in a dark place and I'm so sad and I can't believe I did that. And I don't know if she's gonna come back. I mean, can you imagine trying to come back from this? The internet doesn't forget this kind of stuff. And so while the LAPD might not be charging her with anything, but let's not let's not forget that the LAPD also um, isn't doing anything about Danny Masterson and four allegations of alleged um, RAPE and the search of Church of Scientology. They also are the same group that like did some really crappy investigations of O.J. Simpson. Let, let's just say that LAPD doesn't have the best record for holding people accountable. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised in that respect, but the sometimes criminal charges are not even as harsh as the world of public opinion. And I would say in the world of public opinion, Brooke Houts is not going to have any favors or any friends at this point. I am I think she should actually delete her page before it even gets deactivated. And you guys, I'm not the kind of person that subscribes to the idea of deplatforming people. Um, I just don't, I think there's a place for everything. But I do think that once you get to a certain point and if people are angry enough, you know, either deactivate or just like take your channel offline, you can do that. And I still don't understand why YouTube continues to allow these types of problematic behaviors and then they don't say anything. There was a recent upgrade or a creator letter that went out to YouTube creators um, in the beginning of the month or at the end of August from the CEO. And at the time she was talking about how they're making changes to how um, other channels can talk about other channels and stopping the harassment and the bullying and all of that but it didn't really say what steps they're taking to enforce bad behavior on YouTube by creators. There's still a lot of very vulnerable populations that are not protected, including children and animals. And I just worry that this freedom of speech or open platform that YouTube has doesn't come without its hiccups. Now, YouTube says that problematic content on their platform is less than a fraction of 1%. Is that like the go-to standard that people use when there's like controversy? Because remember, um, Jacqueline Hill with her lipstick stuff said that her, her bad lipsticks represented less than a fraction of 1%. Is that just what everyone says? 
I feel like I see a lot more problematic content than a fraction of 1%. But again, alas, there are, I think, damn near a billion people on YouTube. So there are probably not as many problematic channels as I am just seeing constantly on a day-to-day -day basis because all of you guys keep me in the loop and want my commentary on everything. So I still am of the belief that they need to do more to protect animals and children. I am disappointed that nothing is going to happen with Brooke and I'm hopeful that something in the future will so change I... with the rules on how they manage these types of situations. Um, Brooke has not been back and Brooke, I don't think I'd ever come back if I were you. I would change my name, I would move to another country and I would fall into obscurity because her career is theoretically and completely over at this point. Um, I would like to know what your thoughts are on this story and what your, is this, is justice served? Do you agree that this wasn't criminal abuse? Do you agree that she should still have her dog? Do you think she has a right to come back? Do you think YouTube should have said something? I want to know what you think because I'm not happy. All right, you guys, I'll be back later with more, but that's all I have for now. Bye.